Yo, what's going on, everybody? Ultimate DJ's here from the Teaching Trick YouTube with another Star Trek Fleet Command video for you here today. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about solo armadas. And a lot of people have been asking about the appropriate crew to use on these things. You know, crazy enough, there are so many different varieties. It depends very, very much on what you're flying, the, the ships that you're flying, and the targets that you're trying to hit. Rev Deuce did a video here uh, several days ago, which I will uh, refer you to for maximum loot gain. So I'm not going to discuss that here today. I'll uh, instead point you to Rev. If, in fact, you find yourself unable to punch to the next target, but surviving the next lowest target with a great degree of survivability, then there might be some benefit in uh, swapping around and doing a little bit of loot crew and trying to improve your loot payouts against those armadas. And Rev did a great va uh, video breakdown on that. What we're going to be talking about today is punching up. All right. It's a big thing. You guys know I'm all about efficiency, maximum payout, least amount of time, most loot for my buck, but also punching up on those targets uh, because even with loot crews, if you're able to punch up on a target, in most cases, there's very, very few scenarios in which this won't hold true, but it can mathematically. But in most cases, punching up to the next target, even with loot crew on the next lowest target, in a lot of cases will actually still get you more loot, but it does depend on the ships and the power and so forth that you're flying. So let's hop into it here. The first thing that I wanted to point out is that I do not have Julian Bashir unlocked and I do not have Jadzia Dax unlocked. These two officers this month are going to actually throw a little bit of a monkey wrench into possibly into the crewing that you're going to be choosing for the solo armada targets. For example, Jadzia Dax in the captain's chair, basically another six of 11, really increasing that piercing and uh, increasing weapons damage as the officer ability. And then you come over and take a look at Julian Bashir. Uh, Julian Bashir in the officer slot going to increase critical hit chance by 20%, which is significant. I really, really like that. That is uh, a really, really significant uh, ability, 20% on the critical hit chance, especially if you're able to get Lorca in there somewhere um, and uh, really kind of be able to punch up and, and hit, or not punch up, but hit bigger shots by getting that hull breach. Uh, also, a new officer this month, probably for the lower deck, increasing critical hit damage by 20%. I really like Odo here as well, if you're going to be flying him with Bashir and Dax. Now, where would you put those? Well, maybe on a well-developed uh, Defiant, or it could even go on a second ship, so long as it's not an Enterprise. We've talked a lot about what the Enterprise can do for these solo armadas, but some people are hitting targets beyond that of the G3 Epic Enterprise. So if you're flying two G4 ships or you're flying G5 ships, then you can actually get rid of one of the crews I'm talking about today and maybe potentially replace it with Jadzia, Bashir, and Lorca, uh, and then Odo on the underdeck, very possibly. Let's talk about the crew that I've been using. The crew that I've been using here um, is uh, starting with the Pylum, my G4 rare Pylum. This is my loot bonus ship. I'm getting loot bonus here from the ship ability, but it's also my Brute. It's the biggest of the three ships that I've got available, a 24 and a half, eight and a half on the Enterprise and just shy of eight on the Defiant. So it is my Brute ship. It's the biggest ship I've got. So obviously I go with a time-tested and very, very awesome crew here, which would be five, six, and con. The reason that I go with five, again, mitigation, and I'm getting that synergy, so the mitigation is absolutely maxed out, still maxed out, but also for that loot gain. Again, tapping into five of 11, being one of the most valuable cards in the game, having that officer ability for loot gain on top of what the pylum is giving. And then, of course, six of 11, increasing your piercing to decrease the mitigation from the target down to its minimum. Uh, he works off of attack, so I've got three officers uh, stacked down here for attack, getting me, uh, in my case, 80,000 attack points and maxing out my stat bonuses for the pylum. Ship number two is going to vary for a lot of people, uh, depending. If you're going to fly an Enterprise, then this crew is unique for the Enterprise. It's going to be very, very different for a lot of other people. All right. Especially if you're not flying an Enterprise. For example, I'm taking an officer slot here for Kirk. Well, that's simply for the Enterprise ability and morale. If I'm not flying the Enterprise, I absolutely drop Kirk. I've got Miles O'Brien. I'm uh, sorry, not my, Miles O'Brien. I've got uh, Benjamin Sisko here in the captain's chair. Again, helping me with massive amounts of mitigation. All right. Which is very good. And then I've got a basically a con ability built into his officer ability. So I've got both 
five of 11 and Khan kind of built into one card uh, here with Benjamin Cisco. And I can get rid of Kirk. Who would I put here? I would bring in Miles O'Brien. It is kind of silly that I'm not using him right now, but it's only because I'm using the Enterprise. If I were using anything else, then I would absolutely, without a doubt, bring in Miles O'Brien. Why don't I put Miles over here in the slot of Lorca? Well, I need Lorca, all right? I want Lorca because Lorca is giving me that hull breach and all these other crits that are uh, flying out from all these other ships are going to be amplified by the effect that is hull breach. I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely want uh, Gabriel Lorca here on the side card. And uh, that is going to be on this ship because the Enterprise is my tank. It's going to survive for a very, very long time. Why is that? Because of the Enterprise ability and Kirk. If I'm not flying the Enterprise here, I would deviate this plan from Cisco, Miles, and Lorca. All right? And that's going to get Cisco more mitigation, again, giving it more survivability and lasting longer. And then, of course, Miles giving me more damage output, possibly very long term, decreasing my survivability, but I'm getting more shots. So I'm ending the battle quicker. And then I've got Lorca. I've got a couple lower deckers, and I've stacked this thing up with health, which is what. Uh, Cisco is using. And then I come over here to my third slot, which is the Defiant. Now, right now, my Defiant is not holding up uh, itself, all right? And I know a lot of players have had some various forms of crew uh, variants uh, in this. I particularly am going with Picard, Beverly, and Eurydice. The biggest reason for Eurydice, uh, I'm using Picard, Beverly, so I'm getting Eurydice's chance above 100%. But the reason that I use Eurydice here is, again, it's increasing the survivability of my Defiant. Every single, uh, single time the shields are depleted, Eurydice, uh, with Picard and Beverly's bonus, is going to have a 100% chance to heal the shield health by 5%. Now, that's not a lot. All right, it's not that big of a deal. The point is the shield comes back. And given the mechanics of shield and hull and mitigation in this game, whether there's five shield health points or five million shield health points, if I take a 10 million power shot, that is still going to take the 80-20 split. Even if I only had one shield health point, it's still going to take 80% of the damage. So having her constantly bring the shields back up is saving 80% of non-mitigated damage from hitting my hull, and that's why she is so, so important there, increasing the survivability. And then, of course, we got Picard, who is increasing critical damage just a little bit. Not really there for that. He's there for the bonus. <coughs> but, excuse me, Furball, I do have mitigation from Beverly. Now, some people have talked about using Pike here instead because with Eurydice being the, the tier that I've got, or 75%, I don't need the full benefit of Pike Moreau or Picard Beverly. I just need one of them here. Well, I've got Beverly here for the mitigation. If I'm using Pike here, then I still need Beverly because I need the mitigation. I have to have the mitigation to survive. Otherwise, the shield hull split still ends up being too much. I take too much damage to my hull and I die. I am unable to max my statistic bonuses here. So obviously I put the priority on hull. Uh, don't need as much priority on defense. I would like a little bit more attack, but my best attack officers are flying with five, six and con. So for me, this is the best current combination of officers that I've got that I want to fly with these three ships. As I mentioned, as your Defiant gets a little bit stronger, it very well, very well could end up being a great uh, spot here for running Jadzia, Bashir, and uh, maybe Odo under deck with maybe a Miles O'Brien if you're if you're not using him over here. But uh, definitely a couple of different spots and a couple of crew, crew combinations. But the Defiant probably needs to be better than Tier 5 as far as the targets that I'm hitting. I am an Ops 49, so I'm hitting level 50 and 51 targets in the solo armadas, and Tier 5 is not strong enough to do that by itself. Later on, absolutely. So let's take a quick break while we fly up here to this space, and we'll show you uh, a little bit in the battle log, and we'll actually show you the outcome of this particular crew set in the largest G4 armada. We're going to do an uncommon on the video. That would be a 51 uncommon. It's the largest one we can do, and we'll show you the results coming up right after this. All right, guys, so we've flown into Yera. This contains the 51 uncommons. 
the largest one that, uh, in my opinion, a G4 player can be able to hit without flying a G5 ship. We got about 30 seconds on the timer. I've already started it. You'll notice I have not done my Defiant boost yet. I'm going to here in just a couple of seconds. The reason I do that is to give myself plenty of time because I'm actually going to go for a two for here, okay? I'm going to use my Defiant boost here, but because that timer now, uh, can you see it? Uh, it's got three and a half minutes on it. That's going to give me time not only to do this one, but I anticipate enough whole health remaining so that I can come in and do a second uncommon just like that and actually be able to get two armadas with one set of a blade of armor juice, one boost. That way I can actually do a little bit better. Now, we'll take a look uh, at the battle log here in just a second. Let's find our next target, and we'll get ready to start that up in a second. I'm going to give it a second to try to re- uh, to try to uh, repopulate and respawn, hopefully, potentially, a better target with better loot. But if we take a look at the battle log just here super duper quick, we are going to actually see the amount of hull damage that I took. Very little off the pylum. The Enterprise took a pretty good lick in there, about 80% hull damage, uh, and the Defiant uh, still have about 65% hull remaining. That is, in my opinion, enough for me to chance and try another Armada. Even if the Enterprise dies relatively early, I still have a ton of room to move on the Pylum and uh, plenty of room to move on that Defiant. So I'm not getting a respawn. I do still have two minutes and 20 seconds, so we'll give it about another 10 or 15 seconds. And while that Armada is counting down, we're actually going to check the battle log and check a couple of key factors, including survivability, um, including uh, mitigation and piercing. And then, of course, we'll take a look at the loot gain uh, from that armada itself it doesn't look like i'm going to get a respawn here so we're just going to pick out of the two uncommons we got we got a 550 and we have a 556 oh that's terrible loot from both of those but we'll go ahead and uh and pop this one i guess we better go ahead and do it all right so we're going to pop that one. We're going to send all three ships back to it. The reason that I'm kind of on the clock there is that I want this 90-second Armada timer to run out before my Defiant boost. Even still, I've got a minute 40 left on the Defiant boost, a minute 17 on the Armada, so we've got plenty enough time to get there and get a second Armada out of that juice. Now, we can take a look at what we were able to get. Of course, the Defiant being involved got me the Edicts bonus, but off of an Armada that was scanned at roughly 600,000, maybe 650,000, getting a uh, total loot of 1.6 million off of that, very, very good, and it's going to help me in my uncommon loot progression. We're going to come back and uh, we'll check on that Armada in a moment. Let's first uh, take a look. Number of rounds, 14 rounds. We can see all of our procs, of course. We had Beverly working. We had 5 of 11 working. We had Kirk, so we're not going to worry about shields uh, there. We had Benjamin Sisko working. So let's take a look at this first shot, okay? It went straight to the Enterprise. The Enterprise is running Benjamin Sisko in the captain's chair. So we should be getting a decent amount of mitigation. We're going to pop over here and take a look. Um, it mitigated 932, 954 out of the 1315209. So I still mitigated 71%, even on the G3 Epic, by having Benjamin Sisko in the captain's chair. Synergy, not a thousand percent needed there. Obviously would benefit me by about 2%, but not significant there. So we got Benjamin Sisko getting really, really good mitigation. We're going to come down. We're going to see the pylum starting to throw its shots. There's the Enterprise throwing its shots. Defiant got a critical. Uh, we did not see Lorca up here. Pro oh, we did. We did. There's Lorca with my hull breach. So I'm getting my extra bonus on top of the critical. The Defiant throwing 3.3 million. The Defiant took a shot here. Pylum, yes, critical with hull breach. Six and a half million there. Let's come over and see what the uh, Gem Hadar is mitigating out of what I'm sending out. And let's see, six, four, four, two, six, eight. The Armada in round one here mitigating 46.5%. But on that ship, I do have six of 11. So let's go down, uh, say, two or three rounds. Let's go to round five here where we can see how that Armada is going to be responding to six of 11. This is very, very similar. Here's the pylum throwing a shot uh, right here, 6.9 million. So let's take a look and see what the uh, Armada is mitigating now down to 19.8%. That's just from the pylum. So that's very, very good. Now, we did see earlier and also notice that the Defiant survived, but you can see it had very, very, very little shield. So if we come down, I bet we're going to find a spot where right here in round five, 
the Defiant Shield's depleted, but Eurydice would proc. So that means on the next shot that the Defiant takes, it absorbed 310,000 damage to the shield that should have all gone to the hull. But because Eurydice recharged the shield, then that breaks out that 310,000. So I only got 77 there instead of almost 400,000. All right, we're going to come down again and we will see on the next shot to the Defiant. Same thing. Eurydice is going to keep those shields charged. Same thing. Another 302,000 went to shield that should have gone to the hull. All right, and then uh, so that's the Defiant crew. Of course, we've got Lorca, we got the Hull Breach. We're starting to see a lot more criticals now as Khan is starting to build up on the Enterprise. We're starting to see more criticals because Cisco is building up, and we're starting to see a lot of damage really build up here. Take a look at this round: all crits from the Pylum, all north of six million. The Enterprise throwing three and a half million shots on both their criticals. Even the Defiant throwing a non-critical at two point seven. We're in round eight. Let's go on and take a look a little bit later. Here's round, uh, let's go look at round 13. The Pylum continuing. There's one at 7 million. The Enterprise at two. Uh, more crits. We are all crit here. And again, we've got Hull Breach from Lorca. So this is giving us a tremendous amount of damage output. But look, the Defiant is still alive because Eurydice is able to divert a lot of that shield damage to the shields. All right. And the hull damage is uh, actually very, very little. It's not taking enough hull damage to actually end up killing that ship. We can see here as we just popped out, we did complete and win our second battle with the same Defiant loop uh, or the same Defiant boost. And as expected, the Enterprise died. Uh, as expected, the Defiant ended up dying because then there were only two ships instead of three. And then when the Defiant died, the Pylum took a beating, but it still survived. And that gave me two Armadas on one set of juice. Again, another 1.6 million coming. That was 3.2 million loot and over 900 edicts on one Defiant Juice and one complete set of hulls. And if we come in here and take a look, we're going to see the same thing. 16 rounds probably went a little bit longer because why? I'm doing less damage. I'm doing less damage, so I'm not ending the battle quite as quickly and therefore also taking more damage because the Armada is going to continue to fire at me during the rounds that it survives as well. That is my quick and dirty on solo Armada crewing, at least with regards to punching up. I certainly understand that there are other strategies out there uh, specifically focused around loot, but... Uh, if you are looking to try to hit that next target or that next target contains what you need as far as edicts or loot to try to get yourself on a more frequent path with opening those loot chests in the Bajoran store, then this guide might be willing to or might be able to guide you towards something able to punch up, get bigger targets and therefore get more goodies. And again, I do remind you, the Enterprise is a very special case here. As Bubba says, stop testing with the Enterprise all the time. If you're flying a different ship, you can absolutely tinker around with this crew. The only thing I'd probably do is drop Kirk and add Miles, again, increasing my damage. So that's one last thing. I'll, I'll throw that out there. All right. So what do you think? Are you doing better with a different crew? I'd love to have you share it with the community. Leave your comments and your questions down below. Does this let you hit the next target? Are you, in fact, getting more loot this way? Or are you focused completely on loot? Then go check out my buddy Rev Deuce, because he's got a loot game video with the Defiant that's going to help you out as well. Get paid a little bit more while taking a little bit less damage against a smaller target. I would invite you to subscribe while you're here. Click on the little bell so you know when we do other content, we would appreciate you coming and watching our stuff uh, and sharing with your team as well. We like that. Give us a like you like. We appreciate that as well. My name is Ultimate DJs from the Teaching Trek YouTube. Uh, your friendly neighborhood cat person saying meow for now. Love you, mean it. Catch you on the next one. We'll see you guys. Bye. Meow. Happy meow days. Happy meow days.